Hi, so it's been a year since I published the video with these 41 metals and tested them with a magnet. In this video I will show you a few more metals but also expand to the metalloids and other elements. Not so much because of their weak magnetic properties, more to show you some other high purity elements which most of you seem to enjoy in my first video. Let's start with an element that is often considered boring, boron. But it's an important and interesting element if you ask me. It is used in borosilicate glass with thermal properties utilized in all chemistry labs and in the world's strongest permanent magnets, the neodymium iron boron magnets. It's also the second hardest of all elements, only topped by carbon in the form of diamond. Here I try to detect its magnetic properties. I have a strong neodymium magnet on a sensitive scale that will detect as little as 0.01 grams or 10 milligrams. If the boron attracts the magnet, I should see a negative reading on the scale and opposite. But it only flickers when I accidentally touch the magnet with the glass. So magnetically speeding, boron really is boring. Next up are these four elements which also repels a magnet with their diamagnetism. One of them enough to be shown in a larger sample. My indium sample is way too small to show the very weak repulsion. So is my germanium sample. Wait a minute, that's not supposed to happen. Looks like one side is turning against and attracted to the magnet. There must be a grain of iron from the tools used to cross this sample. I need to buy a better sample. Now, let me show you one with a true reading. This is antimony, which is quite diamagnetic, about a third of bismuth. Without touching the magnet, I get a reading of about plus 70 milligrams, which means that the magnet is repelled by the antimony with a force less than the weight of a match. Not much, but clearly there. Here's bismuth for comparison. I will show an even stronger diamagnetic element later. But first, let me just show you one that's almost neutral in terms of magnetism. Silicon is a very common element. Here's a 1 kg sample. Looks like the turret of a silver dragon. Cool. Silicon is found in quartz sand that is used for ordinary quartz glass. Oh, and the sand in sandpaper? is actually silicon carbide, which I show a nice sample of here. Here you can see how neutral silicon is. A paper clip gives a large reading even at distance, but one kilogram of silicon does absolutely nothing. I need an even more sensitive scale. And now to the true champion of diamagnetism at room temperature, pyrolytic carbon. It's just carbon crystallized in a special way, but as you can see, it really repels the magnet. Normal carbon, graphite or diamond is only weakly diamagnetic. Alright, we are making progress on the right side of the periodic table. Let's go even farther to the right. This is a 14 gram sample of sulfur, taken from this bottle with 600 gram of it. In an extremely sensitive setup with the sulfur floating on styrofoam in a water bath, I am able to detect the diamagnetic repulsion. Next up are these three with quite similar magnetic properties. And yes, iodine is a biatch to contain. Halogens are not user friendly. Selenium is infamous for making you smell badly, so don't handle this too much. Selenium is more diamagnetic than sulfur, so it repels the magnet rather well if the setup is sensitive enough. Tellurium can make you stink even worse than selenium, so don't touch it. It may not kill you, but it will kill your social life. And it's also diamagnetic. Let me just for the change show you one that is slightly paramagnetic. This is aluminum. If I hold the magnet still, it is attracted to the magnet by paramagnetism. If I however move the magnet to watch it, it's repelled, and if I move the magnet away from it, it is attracted. That's a clear sign of eddy currents being generated in the highly conducting aluminum, and has nothing to do with para or diamagnetism. Let's not forget iodine that I showed you earlier. Iodine is fairly diamagnetic, about a third of bismuth, just like antimony. 
All right, I'm running out of elements, but I have saved some good ones for last. This is sodium. Notice how it sinks in mineral oil compared with lithium on the right that flows in mineral oil. These are lightweight metals. Sodium is a reactive metal and is quickly tarnished. It is also a soft metal, so I can easily scratch it and reveal the shiny metal under the outer coating of sodium hydroxide and sodium carbonate. With the magnet I get a reaction, but this is probably mostly the result of eddy currents like I showed with aluminum. Sodium is a conductor and very easily moved since it has low density and almost floats in the mineral oil. In a static setup the sodium would be attracted a little bit by the magnet. For the final I have a very special metal. Here you see the fire diamond for the metal, with 4 being the highest risk for each category. So this fire diamond tells me that this metal could injure me, easily start a fire, react explosively and should never get in touch with water. Sounds like fun to me. The metal is, hold on, a pipe bomb. That's not what I ordered. Well, this metal is a hazmat, so it must be shipped in a secure way. It is cesium, beauty and a beast in a single element. Here I have melted some of it in my hands. Looks like liquid gold. And no, it is not radioactive. This is the natural isotope cesium-133, not the cesium-137 made in nuclear reactors. I don't really want to float this on water, so I don't have anything sensitive enough to show that cesium is attracted by a magnet, but it is paramagnetic. That's it for now. If you liked it, please rate, comment or even subscribe to let me know that I should carry on. The remaining metals are quite expensive in pure form. Gold has been requested the most, so I will try to get a small sample of it for part 3. Thanks for watching. Mm.